Hello and welcome to this um, applied redox titration question looking at a compound you won't come across very often, if at all, at A level, called barium ferry 6. So there's quite a lot going on in this question, a lot of different steps. So let's take each step at a time and try and unpack what's happening. So in step one, what you need to do really is have a read of what's going on and take the actual uh, compounds that are named and try and put together an equation that you'll then need to balance. So first of all, the iron three oxide is Fe2O3. The excess of hydroxide is obviously OH minus. And then the student bubbles chlorine gas to the mixture, which is your Cl2. They give you FeO42 minus as a product. And then it says aqueous chloride ion. So all I'm doing is assembling the things that are named in that description. The first thing to do is to look at the Fe2O3. That means that you'd have two lots of FeO42 minus on the right hand side. In order to balance this equation, you really need to use oxidation numbers. So to start off with, apply oxidation numbers to everything. And then ignore the things where there hasn't been a change in oxidation numbers. We'll leave you with the oxidation and reduction. So the iron is oxidized to plus six from plus three, and the chlorine is reduced from zero to minus one. Now, it might be quite simple to assume that, for example, the iron has um, lost three electrons, but be careful because it's two ions this has happened to. So we need to think about this, and then we can see that six electrons are lost in fact, and therefore in the chlorine, only two electrons are gained. So that's an imbalance. So we can use um, half equations to sort that problem out. So our first half equation, you'll see I've suddenly put in 10 OH minus. Where did that come from? If you look at the charges, you'll see six electrons is six minus, and two um, ferry six ions is a total of four minus. So that's uh, 10 minus on the right hand side. The only species on the left hand side that can be used to balance that is hydroxide, hence why it's 10 OH minus. So I've multiplied the reduction by three because I need to balance the electrons. The six E minus needs to be cancelled out on both sides. So doing that gives us this equation. So now we can go on to step two and think about what's happening here. So putting our equation down from before, the resulting solution is obviously the products. Now, why have I ignored 6Cl minus and 5H2O? Well, the H2O ends up in the solvent and the 6Cl minus is already there. So it's not actually being made in this reaction. It's just kind of floating around in the background. So what I'm going to do is just put in 2Cl minus, which comes from the barium chloride, the BaCl2. So the impure barium ferrate is your BaFeO4. The next part of the question describes the titration procedure and the uh, data that we need to work our way through that. That's coming up a bit later on in the question. So it says construct an equation for the oxidation of iron three oxide. Well, we did that already by having a look at working out what happens in step one. So we drop that into that part of the question. An ionic equation for the formation of barium ferry requires us to actually look at what's aqueous now, FeO42 minus is aqueous, but that doesn't break up into anything else. That's an ion in its own right. But barium chloride has barium ions and chloride ions. So now you can see what can be cancelled both sides. In other words, the spectator ions. So then we put that in as our um, ionic equation, and they want us to include state symbols, so we have to do that as well. So in step three, we go back to the equation that's provided. And in terms of electrons means we need to think about what's gaining or losing electrons. So what's a reducing agent, first of all? It will donate electrons, so something else will be reduced. In doing so, losing electrons itself. So that means it's oxidized. So its oxidation number will go up. So to work this out, we need to apply oxidation numbers to everything so we can see where that's happening. And having a quick look, you can see that it's actually the iodide. So therefore, we need to explain that in terms of step three, not just say that it loses electrons. The other species that's being reduced is the FeO4 2 minus. 
So the solid sample of barium ferrate obtained in step two is impure. They want you to determine the percentage by mass. So to do this, we need to collect a bit of information from various parts of our description. So I've put it all here in the red square, and we used a, a data moles equation moles answer technique to allow us to process it one step at a time. So the data for thiosulfate allows us to work out the moles using V times C, which is our 2.64 times 10 to the minus 3. Now, there's quite a tricky part to this because we need to get the ratio between thiosulfate and barium ferrate 6, but they're in different equations. The thing that's connecting them is the iodine. So the iodine reacts with S2O3, but it also is a product in the first equation. So what you need to do is quickly work from S2O3 via iodine, then back to barium ferrate 6. So doing that allows us to come up with a 3 to 1 ratio. So that means we take the 2.64 times 10 to the minus 3 and divide it by 3, giving us 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 4 is the number of moles of barium ferrate 6 that's been made. To work out the mass, we need to calculate the MR, which is 257.1 grams per mole. So that means the mass that that equates to is 0.226248 grams, which we then divide by our impure solid mass to get 51.8. Okay, thanks for listening. Until next time, see you soon.